Now let's pull up MDSM, Modular, Modular Disk Storage Manager, and start configuring virtual disks, volumes, and assignments. So here's our uh, summary screen. A little wizard comes up, but uh, first thing that we want to do is say, okay, who is has access to storage on this MD3000i? So we'll configure host access, and we'll just name our particular host, and what kind of OS it is. The MD3000i says this is who I see, and. Uh, this first one is, is the host that uh, we're at the desktop with. You can see at the tail end here of the IQN that that is our host name. So let's allow access. Uh, this won't be a, uh, uh, this host will not participate in a cluster configuration so they won't be sharing any virtual disks with other hosts. So we'll leave the default setting here. And while we're at it, let's configure a hot spare for the array. Um, so in the event of a disk failure, we can have a rebuild um, take place with, a, with one of the defined hot spares. And this, this is where we define a hot spare. I can choose any one of the 15 drives in the enclosure here and assign it as a hot spare. And we're done there. So what we want to do next is create a virtual disk. This is taking, uh, as you can see, uh, we have a, a raw system, so everything is unconfigured. Uh, but a, a virtual disk is basically taking one or more um, hard drives, as you can see here, and uh, creating a relationship between them. So if you're looking for a volume with large capacities, you're going to need to create a virtual disk that has many, many uh, spindles in them. And as you can see, it's very easy to dis assign that. So more spindles, higher capacity and performance. I'm kind of thinking of RAID. RAID 5, so I'll add another disk in here. So I could, you know, two drive, RAID 5 doesn't, it won't allow me to do that. So let's add another third disk here for RAID 5 capabilities. So RAID 5 with the hot spare, we've got some pretty good disk protection going on. And uh, let's calculate the capacity um, here. And uh, now what I'll say is to do that all that capacity, I want to create a volume here and I can create a, you know, carve up that virtual disk space and, 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 uh, or, and, and, and you know, 70 megabytes is, is what we want with the performance of those three drives. Let's name it and now let's assign this volume to a host and we've configured this host to have access just uh, a little bit earlier in the demonstration, so we can highlight that guy, and uh, we'll assign a logical unit number. I, I don't like to use zero because that's typically a boot disk. I usually like to go one or higher for just a traditional virtual disk. And, uh, and no, let's don't create another one. So we've are done at the module list storage administrator now I just hook in um, into the that disk into the hosts file system and you can see this is Windows okay so using traditional just regular Nix I'm gonna launch the iSCSI initiator that allows us to grab iSCSI storage and the wizard um, that we ran through earlier configuring um, for the host um, enters all of our uh, target portals to the MD3000i already. So we can get to our storage through those four ports. 
Um, as we can see, this is our particular volume that, that we can see now from the MB3000i. And uh, you can see that we're connected. So this host, at this moment, thinks it has direct attached storage. So configuring this disk here um, for Windows is nothing different. You follow the same steps as you would for direct attached storage, but it happens to come from the MD3000i SAN. And what we could do is write some data onto this particular uh, volume, writing data onto our MD3000i SAN, important financial data. save data to the SAN and uh, we can look at uh, basically our, our, our summary screen here and we can see uh, that our free space is, is is used up a little bit it's been already configured we have a disk group set up and, and, and we've just created um, storage from the MB3000i from initial setup right out of the box